so his um you know as it got to the end he made some decisions regarding me and 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 um uh, and my career that I question and when I think about it in depth I don't blame him for uh, I don't blame him for being for, for for putting for being in this position. I don't blame him. I blame him for his actions. He did. His actions are his actions. Um But the situation. I am standing up. in a moment that I, this is exactly what I was afraid of. Just Colonel LaRusso. So, Colonel LaRusso, Colonel sir. First son of First Class Gallo. Right now, right now this moment it is very uncomfortable. This is, um, I'm, I'm setting it up here. Uh, uh, son of First Class Gallo was... Uh, the subordinate to Colonel LaRusso during a, a a very powerful moment in my career that, thank God, I was able to capture on video uh, and audio. Thank God. Um, Sergeant First Class Gallo, uh, his persona is something that someone can trust. And even I, throughout my time of interacting with him, even I have trusted his judgment. And so as things developed on this particular day, where Sergeant First Class Gallo is towering over me, ready to physically do something uh, of harm to me. Uh, when you look at his eyes, when I saw his eyes, I see fatigue and I see misplaced anger or misplaced aggression, meaning that um, if, if, if he could have went home and had sex with his wife, that that may have been something that would have relieved some of the tension in his mind. Um, if he could have watched a funny army movie or something like that, something to de-stress, eat a bowl of ice cream, uh, there are many things that people can do and people have done in order to bring their anxiety and tension down. And when you look at this face, just look right now, I have it up. Um, Very uncomfortable for me. Right. I've given you an order. Yes, sir. I would. When I look at his face in this particular time, I see um, fatigue. Let me do this right because it's, there's a picture that comes up when he's, when it, works and I have um there we go all right so let me pause this and I think what will come up is the is the picture I should just take a screenshot and 
Comet. That's what I do. Very uncomfortable for me. Right, I've given you an order. Yes, sir. I will do that. Yes, sir. How should I stand in the... <gasps> no, my God, no, sir! This is where sir, what are you doing? This is where Colonel LaRusso grabbed my bag. And so now I'm, I'm reacting to it because, wow, grab my bag. <gasps> no, it's not all right. It is not all right. Oh, no. It's okay. Oh, my God. What's wrong? I feel, I feel like, my life like my life is about is in danger, is in danger right it's now. Not, we're here to help you and protect you. That's all. Don't ever. Don't ever. Why would you think your life's in danger with us? One of the things we're your soldiers. We're your battle buddies. But you're not acting like a battle buddy right now. Actually, we are. We're no, you're to not. We're police you up when you're being been acting erratic. <gasps> this is enough. You got, Mr. W so he chimes in. Now Sergeant First Class Gallo is chiming in uh, with his um, with his thoughts to say, we are being your battle buddies. Colonel LaRusso at this particular moment had ordered me to put my back against the wall in a corner while he grabbed my bag, took my possessions from me so that he could rifle through it because he ended up going through it um, based on what I remember seeing. And he has a bag on him that has something in it, but that has not been explained to me what he's got on his shoulder. Well, I'm telling you, this is like, oh, you know what? Because I got the wrong... I gotta change the the uh, the Wi-Fi thing I'm connected to. Fuck. Enough. Enough. Okay. Okay. So here's now. This Sergeant is enough. Gallo. We're your soldiers. We're your battle buddies. But you're not acting like a battle buddy right now. Actually, we are. We're no, trying you're to not. Police you up when you're being been acting erratic. <gasps> this is enough. You got, Mr. Walker. Enough. Enough. Okay. Okay. This is enough. This is enough. And you did not have my permission to record me. I know, you but... You actually need my permission in this state to record me. This is a two-person two consent state. You're actually committing a crime right now. Do you understand that? All right. I, we've listened to you all afternoon. We've tried to be understanding. We've tried to be patient with you. You're demonstrating that you need help. All right. All we're asking you to do is let us help you. If you had any soldier when you were in EA, now, look see, at me when I'm speaking see, well, to you, sir. Now look, you see this, right? If you had this, any soldier... So I'm standing... Now look at this. I'm standing... My position is I have a camera, and the camera's just basically right in front of my face. So he's looking at the camera and my face. And my back is against a corner wall where there's a cubicle to my left, to Gallows, where his, his, uh, where his, um, to his right and to my left, there is a cubicle here, right here. There's a door here that leads out into the hallway. Colonel LaRusso is standing right here. I have my back against the cubicle, which is to this side. To my back is the corner of a wall, and then there is two 
um, there are two rooms. One that's about approximately maybe right here and maybe another one right there. Two, two doors to enter rooms, which I believe both, at least one of them was closed. So my back is literally against a wall. And Sir First Class Gallo, he's taller than me by at least three or four inches. At least there's more, probably more, but you know, because I'm at this point, I'm not, I'm five, six. I don't know how tall Sergeant First Class Gallo is. But he now he steps toward me, uh, which is definitely a motion of intimidation. Now, whether, whether, you know, in terms of his discussion about uh, legal or illegality of me recording him, I'm grateful to God that I have this footage because what's happening right now is this is part of the moment of where Colonel LaRusso and Sergeant First Class Gallo, Gallo initiate putting me into a mental institution against my will. That's what's happening right here. So him being upset about it being recorded, I'm, that is the least of my concerns because the, especially at this moment, I'm terrified because I've never been in a situation. I don't know what Colonel LaRusso has in that black bag that he had on his shoulders. I have no idea what he had in his bag. I can only speculate, but that is a question that I have. What did, what did Colonel LaRusso have in that black bag? What is in Colonel LaRusso's black bag? He took my bag at this particular point. How should I stand in the? Oh, no, my God, my bag, no, that's sir, my bag right sir. There. In his, in his, is uh, in his left hand. That's my bag. But then he has a bag that's strapped on his shoulder. What's in that bag? That's. I don't know what's in that bag. What are you doing? What's in that bag? Colonel Larusso has a bag on his left shoulder. What is in that bag? No, it's not all right. It is not all right. Oh, no. He's standing with a bag over his shoulder. For what reason? He takes my bag, which has no weapons or nothing in it of significance, and he has a bag on his shoulder. What's in the bag? Oh my God. Oh my God. What's wrong? I feel, I feel like, my like my life is about, in is in danger right and now. And listen, I said I feel my life is about in danger because I'm looking at this bag. What is in this bag? Now, I didn't ask the question, what's in the bag? But if this is the end of my life, thank God I have video footage. Because I don't know what's about to happen. The, I, the only clues of what is about to happen are the fact that I have two men, one portly man and one tall man, one with a bag on his shoulder and one that has begun the process of leaning forward into me. We're here to, We're here to help you and protect you. My permission, my permission in this state to and record me. got his hand in a position to basically let me know that he is in control of me. He's taller. Look, the angle of the camera is up. He's taller than me. That's a threatening position for a person. My back is against the wall. The colonel has a bag on his shoulder with something in it. Something that's so important that it must be on his shoulder in that particular way. No one carries a bag like that unless it has to be strategically set up in a certain way. That's a very, very interesting way that he was holding the bag. And then you have Sergeant First Class Gallo towering over me in this particular way. And if this is right, if what Sergeant First Class Gallo and Colonel LaRusso, if what they're doing is right, then, I'm okay, th th then, then I just want that confirmed to me, that what they're doing was the right thing. What 
it, everything in me feels wrong. This whole thing feels wrong to me. And I'm expressing to them that what they're doing feels wrong. But they're overriding all of my expressions of, yo, this is wrong what you're doing. This feels wrong to me. They're overriding my expressions of feeling that this thing is wrong. They're overriding that. This is a two-person two consent state. You're actually, You're actually committing a crime right now. Do you understand that? All right. All right. I, we've listened to you all afternoon. We've tried to be understanding. We've tried to be patient with you. You're demonstrating that you need help. All right. All we're asking you to do is let us help you. If you had any soldier when you were in EA, look at me when I'm speaking This lean in is, I mean, this is a big deal. You're demonstrating that you need help, and then you start to walk forward in that way. That does not feel like help. If I were in a scenario where I needed help, Sergeant First Class Gallo in this moment is not demonstrating a personality where I would want his help. He's demonstrating that he wants a fight, that he wants me to physically do something. And that's what this moment is about. This is raising the tensions in order to do something that I am amazed it, it is happening right now. I've got anxiety in my heart. I'm amazed at what's happening. What I mean by anxiety, is whenever another man is standing in front of you the way that Sun First Class Gallo is, my head comes up to his chest. And he's got his hand pointed that way. Colonel LaRusso has a black bag over his left shoulder, wearing it in a peculiar manner. For some reason. This doesn't feel right to me. It just doesn't feel right. And all throughout the day, Colonel LaRusso and Sergeant First Class Gallo have also done things throughout the day that symbolized that they were intending something towards me. And I was very uncomfortable with them throughout the day. Uh, Sergeant First Class Gallo, in the same way that he's treating me at this moment, also took me in the drill deck area to admonish me. Is that the right word? To, to say words to me to let me know that he was disappointed in me and gave me a stern talking to. That's what, uh, uh, that is a, Sergeant First Class Gallo, that, that was earlier in the day, probably around 11 o'clock, something like that. To you, sir. If you had any soldier as an E8 who was acting the way you were today, you would do everything that you could to get them help. And that is what we are trying to do right now. You're making it more difficult for us to help you. So we're going to have to use the resources that are available to us to get you the kind of help that you need. Because right now, another you actually lean have in. You see this? This is another step at me. The words, the words, if they were written on a counseling form, might actually be appealing to read. But a third step in, that's a third step in right there. That doesn't, what's the reason why you have the third step in, Sergeant First Class Gallo? What, that's a question I have. Now, these are facts. I'm not, this is not even commentary. This is, I'm letting you know how I'm feeling in this moment. Why did you just step in a third time? And also, Colonel LaRusso, what is in that bag? And why is it on your shoulder like that? These are questions that are happening in my mind while I'm listening to Sergeant First Class Gallo. 
Thank God that I have the video. Thank God. Me, maybe not Colonel LaRusso. You have me concerned that you are a danger to yourself. And I'll be damned a, if a one- A fourth lean in. I'll be, what do those words mean? You're saying words, but your actions are demonstrating intimidation. That's what I'm receiving. I'm, my back is in the corner right now. That's what I'm, that's what's happening. My back is against the corner. And Sun First Class Gallo went from being on one side of the room to being in my face right now. This very, this close. And Colonel LaRusso has a black bag on his left shoulder. What is in the black bag? One of my soldiers, and you are my soldier, is going to do something to themselves on my watch, and I didn't do anything about it. Do you understand? The only reason we're doing this is because we care. Thank you for your care. Now I want you to put the camera down. No. All right. If you need to have the camera on me, that's fine. Nothing that I have Right now, everything that's happening right now is totally... Sir, why are you... Because I agree with... So you agree. He's here to help you. So then, I, I'm fascinated. Could you I'm guys be, please tell I'm me? I'm bewildered by the fact that I have Sergeant First Class Gallo so close to me. This is not a zoom in shot. This is the widest shot, and he is so close to me. And I, I can't believe that this is happening. I'm amazed that I went to drill on the 20th and that at 1,700 hours, almost 1,800 hours, Sergeant First Class Gallo is in my face like this. What is happening? My back is actually against the wall. And I've never been in this scenario with Sir First Class Gallo. He has never towered over me like this before. I've been in situations where it's gotten heated. And it looks just like this. Somebody's standing over you, ready to do something physical to you. You can say words of, I care, and we're trying to be your battle buddy. But a battle buddy does not stand over you like that. That is not battle buddy activity. I'm sorry. And I'm standing here. I, I'm, I'm not a fighter. And I already know that it's two people on one. And Sergeant First Class Gallo has a black bag over his shoulder. This is not a scenario where I start fighting. This is a scenario where I thank God I'm recording. That's what type of scenario this is. Thank God I have a recording device. Had I not, all of this would have went down and it's back to normal. Back to drill is normal. What's about to happen right now? What's about to happen is that some... In detail. There's no details. There... No, yes, there needs to be... There needs to be details. Don't be upset. It's okay. Everything's okay. Would I tell you that? I don't know you, sir. You and I don't know each other. You know me. Okay. All right. We're here to help you. I don't feel helped right now. Well, you will soon. No. Now, that's a very interesting statement. You will soon. I don't feel helped right now. You will soon. That is a very, very, very powerful statement to me when it comes to my liberty. Because right after this moment, you know, it, it, it's still going, but this moment in slow motion is reflective of the fact that 
they took me out of my life and there was no problem. They had no problem doing it. They feel they were in the right. There was nobody else. Where's Captain Strong? I needed Captain Strong in this, in this room at this point. I needed him. Captain Strong wasn't there. I needed anybody in this room with me. Why am I in the why am I in the room alone with somebody towering over me and someone else with a bag over their left shoulder with something in it? He's got it positioned in a certain way that I don't know what's in there. And they just finished taking my bag. And my back is against the wall. Why am I in this situation by myself? Where is Captain Strong? Where is Captain uh, Palopoli? Where is anybody that could take control over this situation? Colonel LaRusso is the commanding officer. He's the leader. So he is in charge of this situation. And he is 100% okay with what he's doing right now. This is a good move for him. He's feeling good about it. He's happy about it. This moment is an authorized moment because he's the authorizer of the moment. I don't understand what's happening. I don't understand why, sir, sir, I'm not out of my mind. The description or words that he's saying in this moment, you can hear those words, but thank God I have video footage and audio footage of the day. I can I can tell you what the day was like and I can let you hear what the day was like because I have audio of the day. So if there's a question about any type of behavior on my part, I can let you hear it. The same way I can let you see this, I can let you hear my behavior throughout the day because all throughout the day I felt uncomfortable with Sergeant Fulls Casgallo and Colonel LaRusso. Both of them were behaving in a manner that made me feel uncomfortable. Is that Nathan or Naomi? Oh, all right. Yes. You were so, so this is happening by force. In other words, what's about to happen, it's about to happen. To you had you have the option. Either What's about to happen? You either come with us, okay, or you get taken in an ambulance. Okay, look, can I be taken in an ambulance? That's what we're doing. There you go, bam. So in other bam. See, here you go. So in this scenario, I have two options, but those were not the options. They just be. Guess on first class gallo just BS to me right there. You have two options. Either you go with us which are already pretty in, in an earlier conversation. No, they've already decided ambulance. They've already decided that. So either you can go with us or you go in an ambulance. Well, I'll choose this. Well, that's what's going to happen anyway. You just BS'd me. You either come with us, okay, or you get taken in an ambulance. Okay, you either come with us, okay, or you get taken in an ambulance. Okay, look, can I be taken in an ambulance? That's what we're doing. So in other She's words, calling you, okay, right okay, okay, okay. You, you've, you've made it impossible for us to do it any other way. Do you understand that? You've put us in a situation where we're concerned for your safety and the safety of other people around you. Do you understand that? No. Okay. You've been behaving erratically. You've been up and down all day long. Okay? You now, showed up an issue, this morning in a completely state. unacceptable this state. Unacceptable state. Um, here's the facts. On Thursday, the 19th of April, I bought a Greyhound ticket. Greyhound bus ticket to get on a bus from Toma to Chicago so that I could come to drill. I only had space for two bags. So I was carrying a bag, backpack, 
that had my APFT uniform and shoes and other items that I needed, toiletries and all that. And another bag with documents and stuff like that that I was going to work on. So I have two backpacks. I got on the Greyhound. And I got to Milwaukee. My father said, I'll take you to drill. Take you directly there. So my father and me met at about 3 o'clock on Thursday. Went back to his house to sleep and relax and hang out with my father. Just to hang out with my dad. We wake up in the morning, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning. And I drive and start driving from Milwaukee and get to drill. I got to the parking lot of the drill center, the Parkhurst Reserve Center. I got the, to the parking lot at 0708. 0708. I was wearing the clothes, which was the uniform that I had on yesterday. So I needed to shave, needed to shower, and I got my breakfast in my hand. I walk into the location and I need a place to put my stuff, my two bags and my breakfast and stuff like that. But because the 91st LOD does not have desks for every soldier, you basically have to find a place. You got to find a place to, to just be. So I went to Sergeant Major Mr. Flanagan and I said, please, Mr. Flanagan, could you give me one of these offices? And after we had about a 15 minute conversation, I was able to, from him, get his permission and his authority to be in one of the offices that's right down the hall from his office. And so I was able to have an office set up. So I put my bags down in there, my breakfast, along with my toiletries in there. And there were meetings we had to go to. And I had not yet brushed my teeth yet. So the day has started and I had not brushed my teeth yet. So I put some toothpaste on a toothbrush and I went to the meeting that we had had to be in. The ESGR guy was speaking. And I went to, and I saw Lieutenant Colonel Richards because I sit in the front of the room so I could listen and pay attention. And I said, Lieutenant Colonel Richards, I haven't, it's about roughly 10 o'clock. And because of all the running around of the unit doing everything, I have not yet brushed my teeth. Sir, is it okay if I go to the restroom and brush my teeth? Lieutenant Colonel Richards said, please, go brush your teeth, Warrant Officer Candidate Walker. Sir, uh, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Richards, he's always demonstrated reasonable mindedness. So I went to go brush my teeth and I noticed in the mirror that my face was full of gray hair. I needed to shave. I was out of uniform. No one throughout the first couple hours of the day, no one came to me and said, hey, Walker, you need to shave. Now, I had not had a chance to do my personal hygiene. Walk up in the drill center and you start just working. So I have yet to shave. So I go and I get, and I take this moment to get myself squared away and I shaved. So I took the gray hair off of my face by shaving. I walked back to the office that was granted permission to me by Mr. Flanagan. And I grabbed my razor and some shaving cream and I shaved my face. And I made sure that my teeth were brushed. It's a very 
very it's very necessary that a person get a chance to shave. I drove from Milwaukee starting at somewhere between four and five o'clock in the morning to Darien to get to drill. And I made it by 7.08. I need to do personal hygiene. I need to take a shower. I did not take a shower at my father's house because I had everything in my bag. And the most important thing to me was not taking a shower and smelling good at my dad's house. The most important thing for me was to get to drill which is why I got the bus ticket in the first place. I made it to drill. And when I got to drill, my actions were misinterpreted. I wasn't up and down. I needed to shave and I needed to brush my teeth. And it was 10 o'clock in the morning. And I'm doing what everybody else is telling me to do And I want to communicate, hey, I need to shave and I need to do some stuff. I know we have a training schedule, but you got to get... So I go where I'm needed. I go where I'm supposed to be. Lieutenant Colonel Richards says, go ahead and brush your teeth. I notice I need to shave. I shave. By the time I was done shaving, I go back to the room where they were having the meeting, the ESGR meeting. And when everything was over, Sergeant First Class Gallo pulls me into another room and admonishes me, gives me a stern talking to. So that is how my day was going. Sergeant First Class Gallo did not ask me anything related to Hey, I noticed that you had a beard and now you don't have a beard. Hey, I noticed that your breath is fresher than it was when we first started. Hey, uh, work officer candidate Walker, what's going on with you? Hey, uh, I need to take a shower. None of that was the case. It was, I was not being a good robot. That's what was going on. I started from Toma on the Greyhound bus at 10 o'clock in the morning on Thursday. I did everything that I could do to get to drill and I got there. More from Sergeant First Class Gallo. Your added actions all day long have been all over the place. All over the place. Your added actions all day long have been all over the place. You've been behaving erratically. You've been up and down all day long. Okay, you showed up this morning in a completely unacceptable state. Now, added actions. Your added actions all day long have been all over the place. Colonel Larusso pulls me into another meeting with Captain Strong. And he appoints Captain Strong as the go-between between, between him and I. In an earlier transaction between, in an earlier conversation between Colonel LaRusso and myself, we're at the urinal. And I'm saying, good morning, sir. And that turns into a longer discussion. Not like, I don't like having discussions at the urinal. So if these are the actions that he's talking about, the urinal transaction, the brought me into the break room with Captain Strong transaction, the pull me and snap on me in the drill deck transaction, are those the up and down transactions you're talking about? These are questions that I'm thinking about while my back is to the wall, while Sergeant First Class Gallo is towering over me. And Colonel LaRusso has a bag on his left shoulder in a weird position for some reason. Okay. As a former EA Chief Paralegal, you were a first sergeant. Okay. Right? As a former EA Chief Paralegal, 
You were a first sergeant, right? Okay. What's the first no. responsibility? Were I you was in not charge a... of soldiers? Yes. Okay. What's the first responsibility of a sergeant? Accomplishment of my mission and the welfare of my soldiers. Right, you, but... You remember that part of the creed, right? I'm my two basic responsibilities will all be uppermost in my mind. Accomplishment of my mission and the welfare of my soldiers. Right now, it's welfare of my soldiers. So the, what you're going to do... Take it down a notch. He's Take it down a notch. Wait over for the professionals who are going to come and help. My back is against the wall. I'm shorter than Sun First Class Gallo. The colonel has a bag over his shoulder in a weird position. You're going to relax and you're going to take it down a notch. I have not brought this scenario up in notches. That's what's fascinating about this whole thing. Thank you. And understand that we're doing this because we care about a soldier. Thank you. And understand that we're doing this because we care about a soldier. I understood the words. May I speak? You get that. I understood the words. May I speak? Not right now. I want you to okay. take it down a notch. I want you to calm down, relax. Everything is going to be fine. There's nothing for you to be nervous or anxious about. Yes, there You've is. You've done enough talking today. Take it down. Relax. I can't. You need to. I'm trying, but you're in my face, Sergeant Gallo. I'm a good dream. No, no, you're not. Colonel LaRusso, if you were in my position, what would you do? I would listen to Sergeant Gallo. Okay, then, then, then here's the deal. If you would listen to Sergeant Gallo, could you do me a favor and could you put yourself in my shoes right now? Could you walk over here and put yourself in my shoes? Or could you at least tell me, I want you to speak to me, sir. What should I be saying right now? You should be saying nothing. The thing about it is, is that while this is what happening, does relax I'm grateful look like? to God that I have presence of mind to still speak. That's at this moment, this is when um, my training uh, as a podcaster or broadcaster, this is when uh, my training as a paralegal to basically we're going to preserve this record because this because now we're at five minutes and 36. This, all this stuff happened within a matter of five or six minutes. OK. And so now. I'm going to make sure that words are said. Onto this recording so that we get the full understanding, because now. Because things happen so fast. And what I was doing was slowing this moment down. I need to slow this moment down. And I need to make you guys talk and say what's on your mind. The uncomfortableness. The anxiety. I need you to speak. And I need to hear the BS that's coming out of your mouth right now. That's what I need. In this moment, that's what's going on. So they have taken possession of me, as you can see. So I'm first class Gallo is to my left. I'm sorry, he's directly in front of me. But in the camera shot, you know, he's to the left. And Colonel LaRusso with his bag over his shoulder. They are in control of the situation physically. But I took control of the situation in my way. That's how I was taking control. I have the video and now I'm asking questions and I'm going to interrogate in my way because since you have control of me, now I still am going to control the room from the standpoint of you're not, you're going to say on the record, you're going to say the stuff that's on your heart. Because I see it on your heart. I can tell it's on your heart. This is what's happening in my heart right now at this particular moment. I know what you're doing. You're saying words that sound a certain way to make it, you know, when you're doing a police report. Uh, uh, I, I actually heard this as a situation, for instance. They wrote in there that the person, the subject, the... Uh, uh, they beat the guy up in the police station. 
The police officers beat the dude up. And in their report, they said he damaged government property, meaning that he bled on their uniforms. They wrote in the report he damaged government property. But that was interpreted because of what government property he damaged was he bled on the officer's uniform. So that terminology is very, 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 very horrible. And that's cover-up-ish. You know what I'm saying? So in this scenario, I take control of what's going on by doing my own interrogation of the situation. I want your words and I want your heart to be exposed on my video. No. Sit on the floor. Why don't you have a seat? Uh, there is say, no, is the I do not want to sit on the floor. I'm a drill, I'm a officer chair. candidate. Sit on the sit floor. What am I to you, Colonel LaRusso? Sit on the floor? I can't believe that I heard him say that to me. Sit on the floor? Colonel LaRusso told me in this moment Sit on the floor. Saying nothing, just being relaxed. What does relaxed look like? Saying nothing, just being relaxed. What does relaxed look like? Why don't you have a seat? Why don't you sit on the floor? There is no, I do not want to sit on the floor. Do you want a chair? Sir, Colonel sir. I'll get your chair. You, I, could I, sir? Colonel LaRusso, sir? Yes. I don't want a chair. What do you want? I want you to move back. Bam! Away now from listen, me. I'm making very clear. I want you to move back that about the, seven you paces. See what I'm, or I'm making very clear that the person that is causing the stress is Sir First Class Gallo by how close he is to me. But for some reason, with Sir First Class Gallo, in this moment, it's okay for him to do this. Why is it okay, Sergeant First Class Gallo? That's what I'm thinking. Why is it okay for you to do this to me? Why is it okay? And it's because Colonel LaRusso gave him permission. Colonel LaRusso gave Sergeant First Class Gallo permission to do what he's doing. Something. You are making me sign for Sergeant Gallo. You're making me... Or something. You are making me sorry for, for Sir Gallo. You're making me. Who's so, sir? Yes. I don't want a chair. What do you want? I want you to move back away from me right now. I want you to move back about seven paces or something. You are making me sorry for, for Sir Gallo. You're making me very uncomfortable. Just sit right there. Just go ahead and have a seat until the responders get here. I'm Me sitting down would, would do what? Give you a chance to relax. I'm already relaxed. You've already said you're not relaxed. So watch. Do me a favor. Sit down, please. Thank you. And I'll ask Sergeant Gallo to take a step back. Thank you. Thank you. But I would really appreciate more steps back. Mr. Walker. May I sit down, please. have my phone in my hat? Please. Please. May I... Please. Have my phone in my hat, please. Which, please. Right there. Now listen. Now look at please. this. Please. Thank God. Now look at this. Please. Colonel Russo, sir. Yes. Please. A phone in my hat, Bam. please. Now I want you to please. see this. Please. I want you to know. Please. I thank God for this. So I've got the camera going in my hand, and at the same time I have my iPhone capturing the audio. And that iPhone had been capturing ever since. So that's the other video, the other audio, or it's 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 a video, you know, or whatever. But the other audio that started with us in the other room, that my hat and that iPhone is sitting there recording the whole time. Thank God. So what I'm showing here is that is that I was doing things to preserve the moment to preserve 
this moment because this moment is probably one of the biggest moments. This is one of the most important moments of my life right now. Someone is taking me into their custody to do something to me that I have, I didn't know what, the, what was going to happen. But at this point, I had enough presence of mind to make sure that my iPhone was recording audio and then to pull out my camera to capture some video. And the thing about it is, is that when you look at all of this, it's very easy to dismiss me. And that's what I am, that's the thing that I'm, I'm, I'm toggling with regarding this whole situation in the moment. And I, I'm, I'm reporting to you the facts of this situation is that in this moment where Colonel LaRusso and Star First Class Gallo where they have me up against a wall and now sitting in a corner. And as Colonel LaRusso just mentioned, he would have rather me sit on the floor. Is this okay? Is what's happening right now, is this the right thing? Is what's happening, is this a good thing? Is this good? It doesn't feel good to me. I just finished telling Sir First Class Gallo that he's so close to me that he's making me uncomfortable. And Colonel LaRusso's actions are demonstrating that they have already decided what they're going to do with me. And he's given certain first class Gallo permission to tower over me like he has. So this action is authorized by Colonel LaRusso. It's authorized by Colonel LaRusso. Colonel LaRusso authorized what just happened. All the audio evidences and you get a chance to see and hear that Colonel LaRusso authorized all of this, these actions that are going on. I am demonstrating the red flags that, that there are things in here that I completely find very wrong. These things are wrong in my mind at this particular moment. But I'm not in control of my own, of myself anymore. I'm not, control, I'm not in control I'm not in control of my circumstances. Sergeant First Class Gallo and Colonel LaRusso are in control of me. Put me at attention. Get in the corner. Sit on the floor. Sit here. Get up in my face and push at me. Those push in, you know, pushing closer in my face, putting his hand in. Those actions demonstrate that I am not in control of, of the situation. Colonel LaRusso and Sir First Class Gallo are in control of the situation. And for them, this is good. What they're doing, they have articulated that they feel that this is a good thing. This is good. Colonel LaRusso endorses this moment. This is good. And I'm sitting here in this moment, just un I'm just amazed. This is, you know, I'm, I'm recounting the facts. I'm sitting here bewildered and amazed that Colonel LaRusso told me to sit on the floor. Sergeant First Class Gallo was literally steps in front of me. Him saying three feet, he was not three feet away from me. He was much closer than three feet. Much closer. And all of those walk closer, walking in. Those, these are not zoom shots. I got a basic camera, camcorder, captured the moment, home videos, and fortunately, capturing this moment. Colonel Russo, sir. Yes. I'm so grateful that that moment. Colonel Russo, sir. Yes. That moment. I was so grateful that I had my phone and my hat because my hat had my phone in it. 
which meant that I was in a position to preserve the record. And I saw that my camera had, I mean, my, my phone, I saw that it had maintained recording the whole time. Thank God. I thank God. My bag is sitting on the other side. No. My bag is sitting on the other side. Yeah, no. Yes, it is. I need my bag. What's in it that you need so badly? Colonel Russo, sir, I authorize you in this moment to go to my bag and lay out its contents. That question, do you have medications you need to no. take? That is very, very insulting. Very insulting. You have just put me in a tough position. And then you're questioning me because you see how you see you see his position, his poise. He's got his arms folded. They're in control. So now you could be condescending to me. Do you have some medication you need to take? That's a very condescending question. And you can do that when you're in charge. You can abuse your authority when you're in charge. You can do that when you're in charge. When you're in charge in, in drill, according to what this, this, this is going on, it's okay for Colonel LaRusso, detachment commander of the 91st, it's okay for him to take my bag, it's okay for him to set up a circumstance where my liberties are disrupted. His bag is sitting up on top of that file cabinet. And him taking it off of his shoulders indicates, in my mind, because I don't know what he had in his bag, but it indicates that he felt in control enough where he could put his bag down. But for a little while, he was he had his bag really well positioned. But now it's above the file cabinet. Still strategically located so he can grab at it if he needs it. But he's in control. I'm not sitting on the floor. I'm sitting on a chair. Thank God I have my camera going. Thank God the audio is going. Your bag is perfectly safe right where it's at. Wait, let me ask you, do you are there any medications that Your bag is perfectly safe right where it's at. Wait, let me ask you, do, are there any medications that you haven't been taking that we need to help you with? No, I don't take any medication, sir. Are you under any uh, physician's care right now? What are we waiting for? No, sir. What are we waiting for right now? Now, that answer right there. Waiting for Captain Very, Pete. very, 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 very BS answer. We're waiting for the police and we're waiting for the uh ambulance that's what we're waiting for so now we have to stall we have to wait which in the in these moments this is where um i as i'm not going to go so far as to say i'm a prisoner but at least in this moment i'm definitely not at liberty i don't have my liberty so in this moment this is where I rise to the occasion by, I'm interacting with two bullies right now. At this point I've assessed, I'm dealing with two people who have bullied me into sitting down. I maintained enough dignity to not be sitting on the floor. They have taken my stuff, my bag, and I, I ensure that I keep reminding them about my bag and giving them the opportunity to dismiss me. 
giving them the opportunity to blow me off, giving them the opportunity to say words that are putting me down and, and um, uh, uh, reflecting the power that they have over me in this moment. And so in these quiet moments, I like to pull out of it the, the truth out of the heart. And these are moments that I, I, I like, because when he said, oh, waiting for Captain P, that shows a level of uncomfortableness. Why didn't you just say we're waiting on the cops and the ambulance? Say that, but he didn't. And I'm laying this out because these are thoughts that's going on in my mind. So him saying that was he's making a joke because he's uncomfortable. And he's looking away because he's uncomfortable. And those questions that he asked were condescending questions. Because in his training, he knows that I'm creating a record. Doesn't know where it's going to go. So he has to do what he can to discredit the situation. That's what I'm observing. I'm observing, okay, so you want to make it about medications and physician's care. And there's a moment later on where my wife and Colonel LaRusso meet where she describes uh, Colonel LaRusso's actions and him needing to plant certain thoughts in different places. Because I think that at this point, I think uh, at this point, the level of ratcheting it up that Colonel LaRusso and Sir Class Gallo have done, that level of ratcheting it up, it demonstrated to me in that moment that they, even though they were in control, they were not in control. They were playing this by ear. They weren't, they just knew we got to wait on the ambulance. So engaging the moment instead of, they didn't, because what was supposed to happen originally is Captain, uh, Captain Palapoli and me should have been walking out to go to Tina Augustus's house. But again, Colonel LaRusso had already planned that we're going to be doing this. I'm, you're going off in an ambulance. He had already made that call. South First Class Gallo had already initiated and set it up. So now what's happening is, is that they got to get me to that point to make it warranted. That's the thing. We have to ratchet the situation up so that it's warranted for a ambulance. That's what I'm observing in this moment. That's what I, uh, um, as I'm sitting there, I'm putting this together in my mind. Why is it? that this thing has been ratcheted up. Why, why, why is this all tense like this? Because in order to say 911, we need a police officer and all that, in order for you to say all that, it has to be ratcheted up. Where is Captain Strong in this moment? How come when Colonel LaRusso made the plan to send me away in an ambulance, how come he didn't have Captain Strong there? Captain Strong is taller than, than Sir First Class Gallo. And I don't think Captain Strong would have allowed Sir First Class Gallo to get in my face like that. I don't think he would have. But the only, two, only three people in that room at that moment was Colonel LaRusso in charge, Sir First Class Gallo, and me. And thank God, with my camera and my smartphone. Thank God for my camera and my smartphone. So now we're gonna make conversation. So, now, Tina, you said is your. Now we're making conversation. Your... So Tina, oh, oh, really? Oh, this is. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Because when you're silent, right? When you're silent, everybody's heart is racing at, in this scenario in some form because they've not been in this moment, or maybe they have, and that's what they do, sit on the floor. Cousin, your wife's cousin? 
cousin or your wife's cousin? She's waiting for Captain P. So, no, Tina, you said, is your, she's your cousin or your wife's cousin? Sir. She's. Battery on my. Sir. The battery on my. Camera's about to die. You need to say something? Oh, well, be happy to say something before it dies. You need to talk about anything before the battery goes out? Yes. I need. The other camcorder that's just like this, out of the black bag. That's all. Go in the black bag. Does it have just a battery I can give you? It's identical? It's identical, but it's too detailed of instructions to explain it. All I need you to do, there's a black phone that looks, there's a black camera that looks just like this in the bag behind you. But the challenge is, is that as you do what you're about to do, sir, I personally feel that my rights are being violated, but... Well, if you're telling me that I won't do it. I would appreciate if my bag could be right at least in the middle here. I don't, I don't want you to feel violated. I would appreciate if my bag could be right at least in the middle here. No. Oh, God. Captain Palapoli, could you please come in this room? Please, Captain Palapoli, come in this room. Stop. It's the tent. I've got two men standing over me, basically. And it's like, where, who, why am I the only one in this room? Ugh. So, anyway, you guys can look at the whole footage. And I added the, 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 um, I'm, I put everything in context. This was not commentary. Because the commentary, I haven't even begun on commentary yet. Because commentary goes into very much detail about all the rest of the factors. Right now, I'm assessing the facts. This is a facts assessment. I'm reporting what happened. So the video is on m3dots.com, Chunks check, Checkmate. The video is called Colonel LaRusso and Sergeant First Class Gallo taking me into custody. This 11 minute and one second video is a, a portion that fits it's the video portion that fits within the 40-minute audio of the other video. Which the 40-minute the one... Is this one. Colonel LaRusso meeting with me that turned bad. That scenario. Now, I have, I have the 11-minute one, and then this one is a 40-minute one. That's the recording that kept recording the whole time. Or at least majority of everything that happened. You can look at these yourself. I encourage you to do so. And the reason why I encourage you to do so See, and so far, so far, it's, um, uh, uh, it, you know, the 40 minute one, you got to be paying attention. You know, and people have short attention span. So I did not present something um, that wasn't a big deal. I don't anything I do and I put on my website, it's of significance. I'm not doing clickbait. And I'm not doing frivolous things. Doing things of kingdom significance. Thank you very much.